Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Bayer Crop Science and CNMC. Peter Johnson at WheatPete, realagriculture.com. What could be better? It's April the 24th. I'm here in a field at Palmerston with an awesome agronomist, Tim Muhlenstein, CNM Seeds. Man, it's April. The wheat looks incredible. We just have to be happy, Tim. Can't beat it. The yeah. heat is very welcome. Yeah, and it's moving fast, but really interesting winter. One of the toughest winters we've had in quite a while. Oh, certainly. No doubt about it. Yeah, we're looking forward to the sunshine and the heat to come. It's been a long drawn out winter, presented many challenges across the countryside. We don't have to go far to see fields that are really struggling. Anything on the later side of planting, anything that was a little too shallow, all those types of things are showing up. But right here, we're happy to be in an excellent field today. Yep, lots of snow mold, lots of water damage, the late planted crops, not many tillers, but this crop actually planted on September the 26th, which for this area, about 10 days later than optimal date, and yet still, what do you think of that wheat crop, Tim? It's gotten right where it needs to be. We have a good solid main stem, couple of tillers there, the density's all here, ready to go full steam ahead. Absolutely, so this beautiful wheat field, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna manage it? Like it's the 24th of April, what do we do looking forward? Nitrogen, tell me about nitrogen. For sure, so uh, actually this field had a dose of fertilizer already just last week. You maybe see the tracks in the background. So that first pass is looked after. The opportunity was there, the ground conditions presented themselves and the growers went ahead and put that first bit of fertilizer on already here. So if I'm a grower that doesn't have my nitrogen on yet, or if I'm a grower maybe a little further north, because remember we're here in a beautiful wheat field, not everybody's got that scenario. Am I, am I still looking? Because split application we really like. It helps with lodging. And, and that's right, you already have it on a week ago here. If I don't have any on, what do I do? There's a, there's a range of approaches, but generally, if you're a little bit south of here and you're warmer, uh, that crop is going to be looking for pretty much the whole dose of fertilizer. It's going to be ready for everything very soon. The advantages to split application are probably fading. We go north or later planted, there's still lots of merit to the split apps, and, no question. Yeah, so, and, and probably the, the, the critical thing to look at is grow stage 30. If we hit grow stage 30, you, it's all in one shot. Other than, what about hard wheat, Tim? Oh, certainly, uh, you gotta uh, adjust your plans a little bit in the hard wheat. The, uh, the net total demands are slightly higher, and that second dose of fertilizer really goes a long way to uh, getting the max yield and creating the top protein level in the hard red wheat, which is important to get paid. Yeah, absolutely. Protein matters in hard wheat, doesn't matter in soft wheat. So soft wheat, if we're approaching growth stage 30, if we get to that leaf erect stage, which this wheat pretty well is now, all the leaves are standing straight up, then probably one shot and done if you haven't got it on all already. If I, you have one shot here, when are you gonna hit it with the second shot? This. Being a hard red wheat crop, we're gonna want it to develop a little bit more close to when that flag leaf is coming out. Uh, that's the staging when we find that it can do the best job. Yeah, and if it was a soft wheat? Uh, as, as close to 30, 31 as you can is when it's uh, creating yield and you want that plant to have what it needs then. Yeah, so the data says, right, that 50% of the nitrogen is in the plant by growth stage 32. Man, if you're a soft wheat grower, you wanna make sure you have nitrogen there by growth stage, second node, growth stage 32. If you're a, a hard wheat grower, then, then it changes, right? The protein matters, but soft wheat, growth stage 32, I think you just gotta be there by then for sure. And, and probably before, as you say, growth stage 30, 31. So if this was a soft wheat, we'd, another week we'd wanna be here because it's moving fast, right? Oh yeah, the sun and the heat's really bringing it on. Yeah, absolutely. So what else are we gonna look at in this field? Like right away, right now, if you're out in this field, tell me what you're scouting for. So this field had a light tillage before planting. We haven't just seen too much in the way of annual weeds coming yet. There's some, they're hard to find. Alongside the weed control, we would be looking for any early disease pressure. Um, there's a little bit on the older leaves in uh, the base of the canopy, but what's the, the green you can see here is coming ahead, gonna be no problem. What about standability? The standability, uh, 
that's all going to be a factor of the density here. So the next thing we're going to be doing is counting stems, checking for tillers, uh, seeing how thick this crop is. I think we're an example of a pretty good and thick <laughs> crop, no doubt. Yeehaw, baby. <laughs> this is what I like to see. So those are the three things, right? You nailed it. It's weed control, it's disease control, and it's lodging management. That's what we're going to be looking at between now and flag leaf on, on a hard red and between now and heading almost on a soft red. So I walk into this field. You said it had a light tillage. I see all sorts of winter annual weeds coming here, Tim. So you didn't, you didn't spray this last fall. That did not happen to my, oh, to my knowledge. Oh, this just this but is just wrong, 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 Tim. <laughs> but that that approach does work really well when the when the crop is at uh, reaches a good enough stage, and there's a chance in the fall to have that window like we had last year. That's uh, a good approach. A lot of people have success with that. Yeah. So so the winter annual weeds in here the sh the penny crest, the sh shepherd's purse, uh, they're, they're really starting to bolt. And so if we're gonna do weed control, we need to do it when? As soon as yeah. the next chance arises. Now, <laughs> baby, now. Yeah. And from a disease standpoint, I think you're bang on. Like we look at these plants, they're green. I don't see much yellow. A little bit of septoria on the old leaves, that's very common. I'm not worried about d disease control right now. Uh, plant growth regulator, what's the stage? Uh, for them to do the best job would be stage anywhere from 31, 32. You can go as high as 37, but the, the, to keep the plant most compact and get those things to do the right job, 31, 32 is where you want to be. Yeah, and if you're really, if you're pushing, if I want to come in with weed control because I'm like Tim, I missed my fall weed control, then I might even push my plant growth regulator up to stage 30. We can go as early as, you know, when that, as soon as you see that growing point moving, we, we can go that early if we want a tank mix. What about tank mix, Tim? Can I put my growth regulator, my weed control, my fungicide all in if I, if I actually think I need it? It can work if weather conditions are there, water volumes are appropriate. Um, it, it can work. Uh, if any of those things are not in your favor, then you really gotta be careful, but it can be done. Yeah, so that's right. So 20 gallons of water, we need lots of water. We gotta mix the three of them. And the other thing you gotta do, watch nighttime temperatures, but you also have to ask yourself, do you need all three? Because if you don't have, if you sprayed, if you were like Johnson, yeehaw, and you sprayed in the fall your weeds, then you don't need weed control in the spring. A lot easier with only two two things in the tank. So, sure. so Tim, like just an awesome potential wheat crop. You're out there in the countryside, man. You, you're promoting all this this good management. Where do we go? Like, does CNM have have a website we can go to to kind of look at some of this data? Oh, for sure. Uh, redwheat.com is our, our uh, company's website. Uh, within that, we have data and uh, recipes, uh, agronomy advice, those types of things. That's our warehouse for that type of stuff. Uh, we also have seedingrate.ca, which can help with some of the fall seeding and spring stand assessments. Excellent website. Lots of good stuff there. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com. Whatever you do, grow, grow great, great wheat. wheat.